when you walk into your garden, you want to experience your garden with all your five senses. Smell is one of the most important senses. Today I want to talk to you about five highly fragrant roses. These are not only fragrant, but they are also great for culinary uses and they are disease resistant, which means if you want to do organic gardening, you don't have to spray your roses, especially if you're going to use them for culinary uses. So this is why I chose these five roses because of their high fragrance and their disease resistance, as well as their culinary use. So let's go ahead and delve deep into each of these roses and explore their characteristics, fragrance, care, and culinary uses. The first rose that I have is the Munstead Wood David Austin Rose, and it's a beautiful full cup rose. It's a double rose. It features deep crimson cup-shaped blooms that exclude a classic old rose charm. The foliage is a rich dark green, and for the flowers, it is repeat flowering. That means you can enjoy it for the rest of the season. Its fragrance is strong and it carries a combination of old rose notes with hints of fruity and musty undertones of blackberry, blueberry, and damson notes. It's known for its disease resistance and for its adaptability to various climates. And it also has a beautiful shrub form. So it's a relatively easy rose to care for. You don't need to spray it, but you will need to deadhead it. When it comes to the culinary uses, the petals are edible. They can be used in various culinary applications, such as jams, beverages, and desserts. And you can also use them as garnish and decoration for cakes and such. The hardiness zone for this rose is from zones five to 10. It requires full sun to partial shade, but it does perform best in full sun. This means that it needs at least six hours of sunlight, but it's going to do better for you if you place it in full sun. I think this rose would look absolutely beautiful with some pink colors alongside it, or maybe white and yellows and also some peach colors. It's a beautiful dark crimson color and I think it would make a beautiful addition for your garden. Next up on the list is the Gertrude Jekyll David Austin Rose and this one is going to end up in my garden one day. I'm not sure when that is going to happen but I have a plan for it where this rose is going to go because of its characteristics and its flavor. For my application in my garden, this rose is going to be going in a sort of a cottage setting garden with a little bit of formality to it. And I want to use the roses for all sorts of culinary applications. So this is super exciting to me. Hopefully I can get my hands on this rose this coming up here. If not, I'll have to wait. That's gonna be painful, but it's totally worth it. When it comes to David Austin roses, they are popular because they are well-bred roses. This is an exquisite David Austin rose. It displays large rosette-shaped blooms in a captivating pink color. The plant has a bushy upright growth habit. When it comes to flowering, it has also repeat flowering, just like the Munstead Wood. As for its fragrance, it is intensely sweet and carries a classic rose scent that is both charming and nostalgic. And this is exactly what I want want because of the applications that I'm going to be using it in. The Gertrude Jekyll is a robust and disease resistant rose, making it suitable for a wide range of garden settings. It needs regular pruning to help it maintain its shape. For its culinary uses, the fragrant petals can be used to infuse flavor in desserts, teas, or to make rose water for various culinary purposes. The hardiness zone for this rose is from zones five to 10. It thrives in full sun and it requires at least six hours of sunlight each day. The more sun you give it, the more growth it's going to put on. The third rose on the list, and this list is not by any means set in order from best to least. This is just randomly set. But the third rose is the Heritage Shrub Rose. This rose has a beautiful blush pink color. It has cup-shaped blooms and bushy, well-branched growth habit that creates a charming display. It is also a repeat flowering rose. The fragrance on it is strong and fruity. It has a wonderful myrrh scent with overtones of fruit, honey, and carnation. It's reminiscent of the classic damask rose. Heritage Rose is known for its hardiness and disease resistance. It's a low maintenance rose that thrives in various garden conditions. For culinary use, the petals of Heritage are edible and they can be used in salads, desserts, or to make rose infused syrups and jellies. The hardiness zone on this rose is from USDA zones five to nine. It does well in full sun to partial shade, but it prefers full sun 
and it can tolerate partial shade. Partial shades is going to be from six to eight hours. But if you want your roses to bloom to their full potential, placing them in a full sun location is going to be the best for them. The next rose on the list is the Rosa Rugosa Alba. Alba stands for white, so this is a white rose. All the other roses that I have listed were double blooms. This rose is a single bloom rose. It has very dainty blooms and distinctive wrinkled foliage. It's a hardy and vigorous shrub and has more of a natural sort of look to it. Its fragrance is sweet and spicy, adding a delightful element to the garden. Its fragrance is sweet and spicy. It has an upright and dense habit. It's exceptionally hardy and disease resistant. And when it comes to the culinary uses of this rose, the rose hips, the fruit of the Rosa Rugosa Alba, are often used to make rose hip tea, jams, or added to culinary creations for flavor. The rose hips are absolutely gorgeous. They are these large hips with a red to orange appear to them. It prefers full sun, but can tolerate partial shade. And the last rose on the list is Madame Alfred Carrier, Carrier, I think, Carrier, Madame Alfred Carrier, I think it's a French rose, I don't know. Uh, it's a climbing noisette rose. It is a gorgeous rose. And if I were to choose a climbing rose, which I have a place that I'm going to be placing a climbing, climbing rose eventually, I want that rose to be absolutely fragrant and this is an amazing fragrant rose now the color is not necessarily what i want to go for in that location and that's kind of why i'm not sure about choosing this specific rose for that location but the fragrance is amazing as it's described and it has a beautiful habit and it can grow up to 20 feet tall the canes on it can grow up to 20 feet tall it has a hybrid tea like roses so each rose is going to be on a single stem the flowers are intensely fragrant and they are cup shaped double blooms when they open they are pale pink and then they tone down to like a creamy white the one thing that might make me choose this rose is that it does not have that many thorns so it makes it pleasant to work with because all the roses that i have are like uh devils <laughs> with their with their thorns one of the roses that i have is just oh the the thorns are gigantic and it is full of them <laughs> so if i can get some roses that don't necessarily have a lot of thorns that would be great and this is one of them the fragrance on this rose is strong sweet and musky and for its care, this rose is known for its vigorous climbing habit, disease resistance, and relatively low maintenance requirements. So it is perfect if you want a low maintenance rose. It's hardy in USDA zone six to nine, and it requires full sun to partial shade, but it's going to thrive again in full sun. The more sun you give your roses, the more they're going to bloom for you, the more they will thrive, and the less disease they will have. This is going to apply to all of the roses whatever they may be. Some of them can live in partial shade, but they are going to do better for you if you put them in full sun. Now, when it comes to this rose, because it is hardy from zone six to nine, I'm not absolutely sure that I can put it in my garden. I may, because we were originally zone 5B, and this year, our zone went up to zone 6A. So I'm not exactly sure if I should trust the zones or not, because last year we had minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit that is zone A so if I do place that rose in my garden and we end up with low temperatures like that I would have to protect it that's one of the reasons why I'm not sure about choosing it the one rose that I know for sure that I'm going to be choosing from this rose list that I gave to you is going to be the Gertrude Jekyll and then next in line for my garden is going to be the heritage shrub rose these are the two roses that I'm definitely going to put in the garden and I'm looking forward to it. So let me know in the comments down below if you were to choose one of these roses for your garden, which one would you choose? And for more videos like this, go ahead and click on this video over here.